Hey, hey, welcome to a new Tuts Plus tutorial. I'm Adi, and in today's video, I'm going to show you five uh, tips and tricks for Figma. Now, if you're a long term user of Figma, then you probably already know these, but if you're a beginner, then um, they're going to be super helpful. So let's start with the first one, which is about creating better strokes. Uh, but before we do that, here's a quick message from Envato Elements. With one subscription, you'll have unlimited access to WordPress themes and plugins, web and email templates, UI kits, and more. There are millions of digital assets to choose from. They have simple commercial licensing, and you can cancel anytime. Subscribe now using the link in the video description. All right, now let's move on to Figma tips and tricks. Number one is about creating better strokes in Figma. So if we're going to create a line, for example, and let me actually make this white so we can see it better. Under the stroke panel, besides being able to change the stroke color, opacity, weight, and where the borders are placed, we can now also change the start and end of that line. And we can choose from these predefined templates. So we can create a line arrow just like that. So that's the start of the line. We can do that the same to the end of the line. We can even choose different rectangles or using the same two drop downs, we can choose if we want a round ending for our line or if we want a square one just like that see and we can actually select this and swap these around so we're basically swapping the start and end points so now this will be rounded and this will be square on top of that we also have some advanced options you can access those by clicking this button right here where it says advanced stroke settings we can select the stroke style between solid dash and under dash you can change the gap and dash values so for example changing this to five will make the dash bigger you can make the gap bigger than the dash as well and you can choose the uh, the end cap for uh, the dash here uh, and also how to join the ends of the uh, of the line border by using these options here. Or you can go with custom and you can define your own pattern of dashes right here. But most often you'll probably uh, use these options to uh, to convert a solid line into a dashed line like so. Tip number two is about easy image cropping. So let's assume that I have this image right here and I want to crop it so I only show certain portions of it, right? Well, currently you can double click the image and you can select crop from this drop down menu and then you can use these handles to quickly fine tune your selection right and whenever you're done you can hit enter and you're now cropped into that part of the image and whenever you want to make another change you just double click and you change those values right here but there's actually a faster way and let me just undo these changes right here and that faster way is by holding down command or control so command on a mac control on windows so select the image, hold down command or control, and then just quickly drag the size of the image until you crop it to the exact dimensions that you want. It's exactly the same thing. Crop was automatically applied to the image. And this is a great way of uh, cropping multiple images really, really fast. Again, just holding down uh, command or control. If you don't uh, and you drag the handles, you will just resize that element and not crop the image like so. So that was tip number two. Hold down command or control and then resize an image to crop it. Tip number three, 
simpler math operations. So let's assume that you have several elements that you want to resize by a specific amount. For example, let's say I want this element to be 100 pixel taller. Well, I can do the math in my head and I can say, okay, this is 175 plus 100, that's gonna be 275. But what if I want to make this element like 128 pixels taller? Well, an easy way to do that is to go into this uh, field here in the uh, inspector and just say plus 128 and Figma will do that automatically for you. And you can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division here. So maybe you want this in half, you can do that as well. And it works on both the width and the height. In fact, it works on all of these elements, X, Y, even the radius. So I can say X plus 100, and that's gonna move it for me. Now, this is where it gets interesting. What if you want to change one of those values for multiple elements at the same time? So if you select all of these elements, we now have mixed written in here because they have mixed values for all of these properties. Well, with Figma, it's now super simple. Let's say we want to add 100 pixels or whatever value to the width of all of these elements. Well, I can simply say mixed plus, let's say 56. And that's gonna make all of the elements 56 pixels wider. How cool is that? It also works for the height. Let's say I want to make these shorter by, let's say 32 pixels. And I can do that, no problem. And that's simpler math operations in Figma. They work on individually selected elements or on multiple elements where you have mixed values in the inspector. Tip number four, bulleted and numbered lists. So I'm sure you, at some point, you've been in the situation where you're designing something, a website, a web app, whatever it is, and you want to create a bulleted list, right? Or an ordered list with numbers. Well, in Figma, you can just create a, a text layer and say like, first item, second item, third item. And then perhaps you would uh, go and find some bullet points and paste them in front of each and one of these elements, right? But there's actually a much simpler way. You can now select this text element you can go into the text category here in the inspector, open the type details, and you have the ability to create lists, unordered or bulleted list, and ordered or numbered list. So simple click, and it does that automatically for you. Numbered list just adds numbers automatically, and it also adds some nice, uh, padding here, and it's all automatic. If you wanna add a new element, it simply does that for you. Pretty sweet, right? It's uh, exactly the same thing for uh, a bulleted list. You can simply add new items, and if you press tab, you can add sub items, and you can go as many levels as you want, as you can see right here. And if at some point you decide, okay, I don't want this to be a list anymore, you can just again, select it, open type details, and just remove the list like so. What's cool about this is that uh, if you're doing like sub items, like I did here, they actually preserve uh, the same um, margins on their left side, like so. And if you wanna get rid of that, simply just backspace or delete to, uh, to get rid of it, like so. So that's a quick and easy way to create bulleted and numbered lists in Figma. And finally, number five, preview responsive design layouts. Now, this is really cool, and this is about using a plugin to see how your design behaves when switching between certain breakpoints. 
And I'll show you the plugin in just a little bit, but for now, let me show you uh, what I have set up here. So uh, basically, sorry about that. I have three artboards and they're called Max 480, 481 to 960 and 960 plus. These represent a very abstract version of a design, right? Maybe a gallery. So on screens that are maximum of 480 pixels, right? As you can see, we have two columns and the elements just shrink along with, uh, with the parent element, correct? On the next one, 481 to 960, it's exactly the same thing, but we have three columns instead of two. Now on screens that have 960 and above, like width, we also have three columns, but we also have a sidebar here, right? And you can see these have the exact same behavior. Now I created this, uh, this behavior by just using um, fill container here on these elements and each element inside also uh, has its uh, resize property set to fill container and the rest goes for all of these. Now, instead of, um, you know, checking how these would look like manually, you can use a plugin that's called breakpoint. Uh, sorry, breakpoints with an S, right? It's this one here. So you can go ahead and install it. And that plugin works the following way. Let's open it. And the first thing that uh, we need to do is create a new adaptive layout, okay? So this is the adaptive layout that they're talking about. Let me just zoom in here for a little bit. Let's see if I hide the UI, that's gonna work a little bit better for us. And here you would basically define your points in the design, right? So the first point is going to be actually one because I wanna start there. The second one is gonna be 480. I'm gonna add a third that's gonna be 960 and another one that's that can be a random number, let's say um, 1800. Okay, so now what I do is I select the layouts for each point or for each range to be more precise. So I click on the plus sign and I select the frame for one, two, four, 79, which is this one right here. I click here, I select the second frame. I click here, I select the third frame. So now I can close this plugin window and we have this adaptive layout right here that shows me all the ranges that I defined. So from one, to 480, from 480 to 960, from 960 to 1800. So now I can take this adaptive layout and I can resize it. And you'll see that once I get to the first breakpoint and I pass it, I get the second layout, right? I get the layout that's displayed right here from 481 to 960. And then I keep making it bigger and bigger until I get to the third layout. And that's gonna take me all the way to 1800. And if I want, I can define other breakpoints beyond this point. But this is a really cool tool that you can use to preview your responsive designs and make sure that uh, the changes at specific breakpoints are exactly how they should be. Really, really cool. And it's seamless. That's the best part. I guess the only downside is that this just feels a little sluggish, right? When I'm just dragging things around, but the plugin is still in beta. So uh, I'm sure it's gonna get better in, um, in future versions. Now, if you wanna make changes to this, um, to this layout, you can open the plugin again. Uh, and by the way, this is a paid plugin. You can use a 15-day uh, free trial if you want. 
Uh, and I can select an existing layout and I can edit any of its properties right here. I can add multiple points and I can even go vertically. So what I showed you here is horizontal, but if you want to create like responsive layouts vertically, you can do that as well. Just like this, you define your points here. You can add more if you want, and then you can uh, choose your existing designs. And if at any point you want to choose a different frame for a specific range, you can just click on this item and you would select your frame. Really cool, a very, very handy way of um, previewing your responsive design. And there you have it five tips and tricks for Figma beginners. Uh, very simple stuff, but as we all know, it's the details that matter. With that said, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I'm Adi, and until next time, take care.